and I will do all of our, all the things that we can do. Not just some of them, but all of them. Anything which I can learn, anything which any, any one of you can learn, whether you like it or not, your life is going to be affected by AI to a great extent. Ilya Sutskever, the former chief scientist at OpenAI, a genius mind behind ChatGPT and GPT-4, once one of Sam Altman's closest allies, then suddenly one of the very people who tried to oust him only to be pushed out himself. For months, Ilya vanished from the public eye, silent, watching. But now he's finally broken that silence, and what he's saying about the future of AI is sending shockwaves across the tech world. Before we dive into what might be the most important warning in AI yet, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more breaking insights from the bleeding edge of AI and tech. You know, there is a quote which is like this, uh, uh, which goes like this. It says, <clears throat> you may not take interest in politics, but politics will take interest in you. So the same applies to AI many times over. Ilya's warning isn't just a personal reflection. It points to a much deeper problem at the heart of the entire AI narrative war. On one side, the hype merchants, Silicon Valley insiders, power players, and investors, they either sell us a shiny utopia or terrify us with apocalyptic doom. Why? Because either way, it fuels attention, and attention fuels money. On the other side, the skeptics, the ones feeling left behind, they downplay everything, mocking AI's limitations, calling it overhyped vaporware. Not because they're evil, but because in a world ruled by headlines, they're fighting not to be forgotten. It's not always conspiracy. Sometimes it's just raw human psychology pulled by incentives we rarely notice. And caught in the middle, you, me, everyone else, confused, uncertain, and trying to make sense of it all. That's why I made this video, How to Prepare for What's Coming. We begin with Ilya's Raw emotional reflection on losing the company he helped build for nearly a decade. The fact that Jeff Hinton was in this university was one of my life's great strokes of luck. We were doing the best AI research out of anywhere. It was the most revolutionary ideas, the most exciting work. But that was a long time ago. Accept reality as it is and to try not to regret the past and try to improve the situation. And the reason I say it is because it's so hard to adopt it. It's so easy to think, oh, like some bad past decision or bad stroke of luck, something happened, something's unfair. And you can just spend, it's so easy to spend so much time thinking like this. While it's just so much better and more productive to say, okay, things are the way they are. What's the next best step? And I find that whenever I do this myself, everything works out so much better. But it's hard, it's hard, it's, it's a constant struggle with one's emotion. And that's why I mention it to you, perhaps some of you will adopt it yourself. This is a reminder to adopt this mindset as best as one can. And also a reminder for myself, constant struggle. When Ilya finally spoke out, he didn't waste time rehashing the open AI drama. He brushed past it. What he wanted to talk about was far more urgent, the unstoppable wave that's coming. AI's impact isn't a distant future event. It's here. It's unfolding. And according to Ilya, we're standing on the edge of something massive, whether we're ready or not. We all live in the most unusual time ever. And this is something that people might say often, but I think it's actually true this time. And the reason it's true this time is because of AI. The thing, the real challenge with AI is that it's really unprecedented and really extreme. And it's going to be very different in the future compared to the way it is today. And the day will come when AI will do all of our, all the things that we can do. Not just some of them, but all of them. Anything which I can learn, anything which any, any one of you can learn, the AI could do as well. So then the rate of progress will become really extremely fast, for some time at least. These are such extreme things. These are such unimaginable things. So right now I'm trying to pull you into that a little bit, into this headspace of this really extreme and radical future that AI creates. But it's also very difficult to imagine. It's very, very difficult to imagine. It's very difficult to internalize and to really believe on an emotional level. Even I struggle with it. And yet the logic seems to dictate that this very likely should happen. You know, there is a quote which is like this, uh, uh, which goes like this. It says, <clears throat> you may not take interest in politics, but politics will take interest in you. So the same applies to AI many times over. By simply using AI and looking at what the best AI of today can do, 
you get an intuition. You get an intuition. And as AI continues to improve in one year, in two years, in three years, the intuition will become stronger. And a lot of the things that we are talking about now, they will become much more real. They'll become less imaginary. And especially with AI, the very smart, super intelligent AI of the future, there will be very profound issues. But overall, by simply looking at what AI can do, not ignoring it, when the time comes, that will generate the energy that's required to overcome the huge challenge that AI will pose. And the challenge that AI poses, in some sense, is the greatest challenge of humanity ever. And overcoming it will also, have the, will also bring the greatest reward. In some sense, whether you like it or not, your life is going to be affected by AI to a great extent. And so looking at it, paying attention, and then generating the energy to solve the problems that will come up, that's going to be the main thing. That's Ilya's take, intense, emotional, and brimming with a sense of imminent radical change. But to truly understand what's going on, we need to zoom out. Enter the other side of the debate. Representing that side is another titan in the field, Yan LeCun. And let's just say, he couldn't disagree more. You're gonna have, you know, within a few years, two years, I think, for some predictions, uh, a country of geniuses in a data center, to quote uh, someone who we, well, we may name list. I think it's nonsense. It's complete nonsense. I mean, sure, there are going to be a lot of applications for which, you know, systems in the near future are going to be, you know, PhD level, if you want. But in terms of, you know, overall uh, intelligence, no, we're still very far from it. I mean, you know, when I say very far, it might happen within a decade or so. So it's not that far. And Lacan isn't shouting into the void. In fact, many other giants in tech quietly stand closer to his position than Ilya's. People like Demis Hassabis, Sundar Pichai, even Sergi Bryan, they all lean toward a more cautious, conservative timeline when it comes to AGI. Uh, AGI before 2030 or after 2030? Uh, 2030. Boy, you really kind of uh, put it on that fine line. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say before. Before? Yeah. Demis? I'm just after. Just after? Yeah. Okay. Um, no pressure, Demis. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> well, I have to go back and get working harder. Will the AI think it has reached AGI by 2030? Mm -hmm. I would say we will just fall short of that timeline, right? So I think it'll take a bit longer. So then why is someone like Dario Amodai, CEO of Anthropic, one of the fastest rising AI labs, going on the record with warnings that sound as urgent as Ilya? Something doesn't add up right. Dario, you've said that AI could wipe out half of all entry-level white-collar jobs and spike unemployment to 10 to 20 percent. How soon might that happen? But I think what is striking to me about the, the, this, this AI boom is that it's bigger and it's broader and it's moving faster than anything has before. And so compared to previous technology changes, I'm a little bit more worried about the labor impact simply because it's happening so fast that, yes, people will adapt, but they, they, they may not adapt fast enough. And so they're, they're, you know, they're, there may be an adjustment period. Dario's urgency isn't just philosophical. It's strategic. Big players like Google. They can afford to wait, experiment, think long-term. But smaller labs, they have to make AI feel like the most urgent and world-changing tech right now because their survival depends on it. But incentives aside, here's the real kicker. Dario might be right. We may not need AGI to disrupt the world. In fact, job automation might not require AGI at all. And that's where things get uncomfortable. Just to make it explicit, because we've been touching on it here, even if AI progress totally stalls, you think that the models yes. are really spiky and they don't have general intelligence, yes. it's so economically valuable and sufficiently easy to collect data yes. on all of these different jobs, these white collar job tasks, yes. such that to Shalto's point, we will, we should expect to see them automated within the next five years. Yeah. Like even we, if we you need to hand world. spoon every single task yes. to the model. It's like economically worthwhile to do so. Even if like algorithmic like progress stalls out and like we just never figure out how to like keep progress going, which I don't think is the case. Like it, that hasn't stalled out yet, it seems to be going great. Um, the current suite of algorithms are sufficient to automate white collar work provided you have enough of the right kinds of data. Yes. And in a way that like compared to the TAM of salaries for all of those kinds of work, 
is so like trivially worthwhile. Yeah. Mm. yeah, exactly. So here's the picture. Some experts say AGI is far off. Others think it's knocking on the door. But almost everyone agrees on this one thing. AI-driven job disruption is close, very close. And it won't happen all at once. It'll creep in industry by industry, occupation by occupation. Take self-driving as the canary in the coal mine. It's not AGI, not even close. But it's real. And domains closest to the AI labs themselves, like coding and research. One step at a time, AI begins to chip away at the entire white-collar job market. You and I probably have our own beliefs about where all this is headed. But when you average the views of the most influential minds across AI, economics, and tech, here's what you get. AI automation. It's already becoming a powerful force, reshaping industries with precision not all at once but bit by bit. And there's a massive divide in the narrative. AI researchers and tech optimists see rapid change and explosive potential. But if we look at all the data, here's the one undeniable truth. AI-driven job disruption. That's not future talk that's happening right now. From Ilya to the skeptics, everyone agrees on that. So the smartest move? Focus on what's real, what's tangible, what's unfolding in your industry today. Keep your eyes open, because sooner or later your profession might be next. Got thoughts or personal stories about AI in your field? Drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.